Hi, David Ellenstein here, Artistic Director of North Coast Repertory Theater. Thank you for tuning in today to our theater conversations. If you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. That would help us out a lot. Thank you. It is my pleasure today to welcome to our theater conversations, one of my favorite people in the world, Aww. the extremely talented and beautiful Lucy Arnaz. Thank That's you for very kind. talking with me today. Thank you, David. <laughs> Lovely to see you in cyberspace this way. Cyber thank hugs. <laughs> oh, thank you. And back to you, of course. I miss you so much. You too. Miss, miss hanging out with you. Yeah. So um, you have had an extraordinary life and career. I mean, unique and different and out of the ordinary to what most people have. Born into a, a really um, famous showbiz family and then grown up and, and had a great career in television, movies, theater. So now as you, you are getting towards the middle of your life mm -hmm. um, and, and you look at, at, at everything that you've had that's happened, what what do you reflect on most? What 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 do you what do you look at and go? This is important. This is not important. Uh, oh. I'm lucky in this way, and, and, I'm, <laughs> and I'm I'm not lucky in this way. Yeah, it, it's this might be a different conversation if we weren't here in the middle of COVID nineteen, right? Right. right but right. but truthfully, I've always kind of put family and our needs first, you know. Um, I've had kids for a long time now, 40 years, and my husband and I and our, our group, we kind of focus on what's best for the group. And once I started having kids, I had to make different decisions on what jobs I would take. And could I run off for, you know, five months and go do a movie with so-and-so? You, you, you have to put it in perspective. And I, I had a lot of friends who did, some of them were fortunate enough, like Meryl Streep, to bring her kids with her, you know, when she went. But we had two older sons, like you know, 11 and four and stuff that were Larry's from his first marriage and my stepchildren. And then our children, you just can't, you just can't leave. And you can't just take them all out of school and take them with you. So I started focusing more on, well, how could I do both? How can I be an actor and also be a mom and be there for them? I mean, when I think back, I was lucky. I, I, I grew up with two amazing people and they were wonderful inspirations to me on lots of levels, on lots of levels. But they were two working parents. So they were, neither one of them were really home. And we missed a lot of that growing up. They missed, they missed a lot, you know? And I didn't want that to happen. So uh, I missed less than they did, but I still missed. And um, I keep playing catch up with that. So I think after I did television and then I went into some, remember when there used to be TV movies before there was Netflix movies and theater, regional theater, national tours, Broadway. Then after the kids got to a certain age, I, I started choosing to do more concerts and sort of that's something you can produce by yourself. And you just get somebody to sort of book that and you can run around and do concerts because you can go out for a little smaller chunks of time and then you come home and then you're home with your husband and the kids and whatnot. It, it suited me better over the long haul. Um, eventually I had to say yes to a few plays and a couple of movie things here and there, you know, once in a while, but primarily for the last, um, just over 30 years, I've been primarily a, a concert performer, which sort of makes people wonder where she went. Because if you know, people don't really write about concerts. They write about television, movies, and Broadway. But they don't really write about people who are out doing that. You don't, it's like you've disappeared off the face of the earth, unless there's a local review from somewhere that you've just played, you know, that there's that. But otherwise, it's like they go, so are you, are you still in the business? Are you, are you still in show business? And I have to go, yes, I am. <laughs> Oddly enough, but it works for me. So you mentioned Larry. Larry is your husband. Larry yes. Luckenbill, my husband, yes. Larry Luckenbill, who is an awesome actor on his own. Awesome. Uh, Broadway movies. Uh, right. And, and also quite well known for his one-man shows 
I'm happy to say he's done several of them at North Coast Rep. Yes, so he has. Lucky to see him do Lyndon Johnson or Teddy Roosevelt right? or Clarence Darrow. Right. All one person shows that he does out there. And uh, wrote them too. Right. There's a fun story you told me about um, how you two kind of got to know each other and met while you were kind of performing around the corner from each other. Yes. Could you share that maybe? Yeah, um, I don't remember which part you remember the most, but I, I met Larry uh, with a mutual friend. We were meeting at Joe Allen Restaurant in New York on Restaurant Row there. I was starring in They're Playing Our Song, a musical by Neil Simon, and Larry was starring in Chapter Two, which was a straight play by Neil Simon. And uh, we had the same producer too, you know, Manny Eisenberg. And um, a, a lady was going into his show to replace his... Larry's wife, because they were getting divorced. Perfect time to meet someone when they're on the rebound, but they were getting divorced. And so uh, another lady was going, was going into it who was a mutual friend of mine. And we were having lunch and I was about to leave Joe Allen and she said, oh, oh st stick around. Marilyn Redfield was her name. You may know Marilyn, a wonderful actress. And she said, oh, listen, would you stick around? Um, Larry Luckenbill is meeting me here after our lunch just to kind of give me some notes and help me with this part because I'm going crazy and I just, and he's so depressed. He's so depressed. He could really use, you know, we, we had this little group called the Matinee Idols, I-D-L-E-S, like ha ha ha, which would meet on Saturdays in between shows, just people from other shows, no civilians. And she said, why don't you invite him to Matinee Idols? And maybe he could, you know, cheer up a little bit. So I said, sure. Do you know him? I said, no, I don't, I don't know Larry. I've heard, I've heard he's a wonderful actor. And in he walked. It was mid-September and I remember the door opened. I vividly remember the door opened to Joe Allen's is like a double door and the first door opened, the second door opened and it was windy and leaves blew in with him. And he was wearing brown corduroy pants and a brown plaid flannel shirt and a brown corduroy jacket with you know, leather on the bottoms and he had smoking a pipe and wearing this cap he had a book and a chair and a fireplace and a dog, all of that walked through the door and I went crazy. I just thought, oh my God, he's so not like any of the people that I have been dating. But, you know, I was like, woo, wait, he's on the rebound and I had been burned enough times to know that's not a good time to start to flirt. But I invited him to join the matinee idols after we got to talking. And uh, he said, oh yeah, no, I'm with my boys on Saturday. I take them, I have to take them for dinner. Oh my God. So I loved him even more then. But we just started becoming friends. And uh, we drove up to see the leaves changing upstate right after that. And he, once in a while he would come late to one of our lunches. And I took about, you know, he went off and dated other people, almost married two people. That's how rebounds work, David. See, I was smart. I said, no, no, no. He's gonna, he wants to fall in love, right? Right again and be told that he's wonderful. He doesn't want to be told he's a jerk. Like when you're going through a divorce, you think I'm a jerk. No one loves me. So I would have been one of those two people. I'm sure of it. And I dated a few other people during that time. And then I kind of looked at my watch and went, yeah, okay, it's enough. He should come out of this now. <laughs> and I called him and we got together after the shows and we started dating and that was 40 years ago and I never looked back. Wow, that is great. That's great. I fell in love with him mostly. Oh, wait, this is, I don't know if this is the story you told, that I told you, but that day when we met, he said, have you seen my show? Because he was at my opening night, apparently, little did I know, with his then estranged wife. He was at the opening night and he said, have you seen chapter two? And I said, yes, I saw it opening in Los Angeles, but I'd love to come back and see you in it. See, great. So he left me a ticket like the following matinee that I didn't have a show. And I went there and he was out of the show. <laughs> I don't remember this part of the story. <laughs> <laughs> and I said to the guy in the box office, he said, oh, yes, Mr. Ernest, Mr. Luckabill left you a ticket anyway. And I thought, <laughs> yeah, see, but I've already seen the show. I just came here to see him. So I gave the ticket back and I did not. But then when I finally went and saw him in the show, my first thought was, holy God, just let me act with somebody that good on stage once in my life. Just let me be on stage with an actor that's that good. I hadn't at that point, you know. And who knew? 
not only did I get to do that, but lots of other good things. Lots of acting with lots him. Lots of acting. <laughs> so um, you've done lots of plays in your life. Uh, when you think about them, what, what, which ones were the most meaningful? And, and I know I'm putting you on the spot, and I know they all have different uh, meanings for you. But when you think about it, what jumps to your mind is like, that was a really satisfying experience, and this is why. Yeah, like you said, for different reasons, right? Reasons. So, I mean, I got to tell you, the first national tour that I ever did was Seesaw, which is the musical oh, yeah. version of Two for the Seesaw, and it was directed by Michael Bennett. Oh, yeah. And yeah. Tommy Toon was in it. And who's, who's a dear friend of yours, right? Oh, dear, 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 dear friend. And it started me on such a great note. Cy Coleman music with Dorsey Fields lyrics. It was like, I can't believe this is my first real shot. And this is what I get. This is the material I get to work with. So I always remember that as being one of my favorite parts ever. Gittle Mosca. Great, great role. Was so, she was so vulnerable and charming. And it was a wonderful show. Seven months of my life, right? And then I think, you know, the... It's so hard. This is a hard question. I know. Because I love being, I loved, I loved Annie Get Your Gun at Jones Beach for the whole summer on the water with the world's largest stage and your, your sets come in on boats, you know, and I mean, come on, 30 piece orchestra, 8,000 people. And it's just, where do you get to do that? But you're outdoors all summer long singing in the elements in Ethel Merman's keys. So it, it was an accomplishment to say the least, you know, never to miss a show. And then during, right after that, I was sent the script for their playing our song. And there I am, my first Broadway show. I would, I would almost have to say that that was, you know, right up there at the top because you get to work with Neil Simon and Marvin Hamlish and Manny Eisenberg. And, and that's, that's your first experience on Broadway. And it turns out to be just this ginormous, amazing hit that people still talk to me about today. And then I think about years later when Tommy, after I'd had my third child and Tommy asked me if I would please go out on tour with him and my one and only. And I was pregnant with my daughter, with, with um, Kate when he first asked me, but now he was like, are you done? <laughs> Have you had enough children? Are you finished? <laughs> and I said, I, yeah. And it was another seven months, but I, I learned how to tap dance well enough to keep up with Tommy Toon. And I look back on that now and I just think, God, I'm so proud of that. And then I did master did, class. Did baby Kate go with you? She that? did. Oh, she was, wow. she, yes, I took her on the road with me. Larry stayed home with the other two boys and would come in and out. He would visit on weekends and stuff. But Kate went through the whole tour with me. And, uh, and then you do a show like master class, which is virtually a one woman show with a couple of other people. It's a, it's a monologue. Then I did Pippin just recently, right? And hung upside down on a trapeze. At I saw years. you. Shut up. <laughs> I mean, which of those is your favorite thing to do? I don't know. Being in a, you know, that's, those are just plays. Forget the movies. Um, well, what about movies? What, like when you think about movies or TV? Well, I haven't done that many films. I really haven't. I did well, a You did a lot of, of television though, right? I did a lot of television. I did, I did a certain amount of television. I, I veered off fairly quickly into theater. And I did a few films. I did The Jazz Singer with Neil Diamond and Laurence Olivier, which I'm very proud of. And uh, the, the ones that came after that kind of, they were good films, but they didn't go anywhere. The Second Thoughts, which I should have had before doing it, um, was a, a movie way before its time about this lawyer woman who uh, has an affair with a young guy and she gets pregnant and she wants, she's, she's just a crazy musician. She's not having this kid with this crazy musician. And he kidnaps her because he doesn't want her to have an abortion. So it was a whole sort of dark comedy about whether you should have an abortion or not. Way ahead of its time. People did not understand that there could be dark comedy about that. And uh, so movies and I did not have a, a long relationship. Uh, I stayed in theater and I stayed in live performing, you know, for the most part. So, so we were lucky enough to have you uh, perform at two of our galas, do, do uh, some of your musical show at our galas, two different shows when you yeah. did it. So the patrons that were there got to experience you, but most of my patrons who are gonna be watching this weren't at the gala, so they didn't get to see you do that or tell some of the stories you told. Mm -hmm. And they may or may not know that you spent a lot of time here in Del Mar. Yeah. You were growing up. Could you talk a little bit about that? Oh, God, yeah. Well, it was just magical, most of it, pretty magical times growing up. Even before my parents were separated, when they used to take their hiatus from the show, they would rent a house at the end of the beach in Del Mar, down 
where you used to be able to walk across with the horses from the racetrack. And now because of the climate changes and, you know, changes in the earth and whatnot, there's now water all the way through there, which is weird. But we used to watch them bring the thoroughbreds over in the morning and take them into the sea, you know, and spent every summer of my life in Del Mar. My parents got divorced when I was about seven. And then my father rented a house further down south on the beach at 20th Street. And uh, that's the house he lived in till the day he died. And we spent all of our summers there too until I was about 16 or 17. And that's when I was on the show and started doing theater. Yeah, so, I love Del Mar. So um, they were doing I Love Lucy when you were born? I was born six weeks before my mother started the first show. Oh my gosh, okay. Yeah, she was pregnant with me when they did the pilot. And then she had me, they, she stayed home for a few weeks and then they began. Goodbye. <laughs> and that's the end of that story. The rest, yeah, who knew? Um, so, so when, after I Love Lucy ended it and your mom did the first spinoff, which I believe was called- The Lucy Show. Were you on that one as well as Here's Lucy? I was only on that one once in a while, like she'd give me a little shot, you know, and I could go on, do a little part on the, I would think maybe three or four times I had a little bit part on the show. And then years later, when she switched again and did a new, a new series, I was in high school and uh, she decided she wanted to switch up the format and this time have Desi and I play her kids. And I said, no, I don't want to do that. Really? No, I turned it around. I said, no, I'm in high school. I'm in the theater department. I want to graduate from high school and I want to try to get in Northwestern and study theater because that's what I want to do. And she's like, oh, okay. Uh, and she just kept trying to talk me into it and talk me into it and said, you'll learn so much. You'll, you know, you'll learn just as much here as you would if you were, uh, you know, in, in Northwestern. <laughs> <laughs> okay, mom, I don't think so, but, but it was a different kind of learning, certainly. I mean, I wasn't learning the classics, but I was learning from Jackie Gleason and Jack Benny and Carol Burnett and all these other amazing people who were on the show as guest stars. And six years of that was an, a tremendous experience for me. I decided to, to do it because I made a pact with her that she kept. I said, all right, here's the deal. I don't know if I'm good enough to do this. And I don't want to be embarrassed and not be able to continue on as an actress, right? So if we do the first season and reviews come out or the word of mouth, you'll know, you'll hear it, is sort of like, would you put those kids on the show? Oh, God, they're terrible. You got to figure out a way to just quickly write me out. You know, she went away to school. She was hit by a truck. Poor, poor Kim. That's good Something for happened and she disappeared. And then I'll go back and I will pick up where I left off. And she agreed. She said, okay, all right, that's fine. We'll do that. And I guess the first year we were good enough. You know, the reviews were good enough that we said, okay, well, we'll stick around. We'll do another year. And I stayed there six years. So, so I, I grew up with a father in show business who was an yes, actor. Who, who yep. was, he was a successful character actor, but he wasn't a celebrity. Right. And I have to assume growing up with a mother who's not only a celebrity, but a, an iconic celebrity has got to be um, a weird thing to kind of meander your way away from and find your own identity. What, 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 a, what was the turning point that made you feel like, okay, I've now arrived on my own and I'm out from kind of my mom and I'm, I'm not just my mom's daughter. I'm now, I'm now Lucy Arnaz. When that happens, I'm going to call you first. Ah! I think it happened. I know it. I know it. It happened in Miami. I you know, know what? It happened. I met, you were you were a powerhouse. You were an individual. You were a take charge, your own person. You made that show we did together go on. Thank you. I mean, for many reasons. And you. and your your mom may have been out there somewhere, but she had nothing to do with that. That was you. Well, I appreciate that. What I mean by it is, I'm not sure what my Geiger counter would be to to measure when that might be because I would have said my first thought was Well, I guess probably Starring on Broadway and it's a hit and every you get great reviews on Broadway and you have your own Hirschfeld caricature and New York Times reviews and so that that boom there you are however when you're not starring on Broadway you're not the lead of a television series at the moment you don't go back to being the star of the Broadway show. You go back to being Lucille Ball's daughter. It's the default position, always and forever. And I can't undo that. 
it'll never be undone, no matter what. If, it, if I cured COVID-19 in the morning, it would say Lucille Ball's daughter finds cure for coronavirus. It would. It's just, it is what it is. You make your peace with that and you go, you do the best work you can do because you, you climb these steps and you get up there and you have all this wonderful success. And then as soon as that starts to fade just a tad, you go right back to being only that. It's amazing. It, it's every, every interview, every, not this one. Don't worry, Larry's going to get that. He okay. promised. <laughs> every, uh, you know, we're talking about theater here and primarily, and you know me, but a lot of just generic interviews with people who don't, they really don't know how to get beyond that. I would say 99 and 9 tenths percent of the people only want to talk about that. It's Let's amazing. Let's not talk about that anymore. No, 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 it's okay. I like talking to you about it because you come at it from a different angle. You don't say, what was it like growing up with me? Because what the hell's the answer to that? Right. Right? Well, I want to ask you about what's it, what, what's next for you? What do you want to do? What's, <laughs> what's the next thing that you want to do? Do you want to do more great plays? Do you want to do your cabaret act? Do you want to do film? Are, are you done? I mean, what what still is exciting to you? Yeah, I don't want to say I don't want to do films and I don't want to do theater. I don't want to say that because then people will stop asking me and I evaluate them project by project. Right. But I'm at a place in my life where I feel like I'm in my third act and my husband is... A five act play though, right? Hopefully. My husband is at a certain age, right? He's quite a bit older than I am. And th these are the best years of our lives. So I, I'm not eager to, to take jobs that make me leave for a long time. And he's not one of those guys who wants to tag along and just be there, you know, while I do what I do. So I'm, I'm, it's hard to say. It's really hard to say. I love doing my concert work. I really, I really do. This, uh, this epidemic pandemic has forced me to cancel 10 sold out concerts in a row. We were just gearing up, you know, March, April, May, and June, really. And I had lots of concerts and they were, they were sold out. It was great. Damn. And I, you know, we had to cancel them for all the right reasons. I canceled them before I canceled out before Disneyland closed. I just want you to know, I knew that this was going to be bad and I'm not going to reschedule them until I know everything is safer than safe. Because unfortunately, the business you and I are in is a business of audiences. Right. And even when other things will start to creep back, we still can't cluster people together until everybody feels comfortable with that. Right. And you push it too soon, it's not going to sit well on your heart, you know? Right. So, we, so we are, I'm yeah, seeing this as being a long haul deal. So we're now I'm, I'm organizing archives in my garage and getting some of that stuff done that I never have time to do. And it's been good. So we'll see. Well, I, but, I just want to say, you know, the play that I met you on, uh, which was was problem plagued because we were doing it at the Coconut Grove Playhouse, which was closing. Well, yeah, we didn't, didn't we didn't know that we didn't know it, but but it, but, but that's what was happening, and right. but we we got that last production on through yours. We rehearsed part of it in in the rec room at your place. Well, in, I don't, okay, yeah, I'll never forget that. Unbelievable. But, uh, but I know, and I had no idea because you know this. I had met you once before, but we had never worked together. I had no idea what a really good actor you were, and that was not a musical. That was a play where you had to play two very different characters. Uh, right. One was, one was pretty straight, and yeah. one was dramatic. Yeah. Uh, but they were both dramatic characters, and you were awesome. Thank so you, David. I, I, I just, I, I don't know when. I'd love to see you back on stage in a in a serious role. Yeah. No, I will. If I find something that I that really really interests interests me, and I don't have to commit, you know, half a year to, of my life to it, I definitely would do it again. It's just all in timing and what's going on here, and do I have other things happening? Listen, last year I was saying no to a lot of things because both my daughter Kate, who you knew and worked in the show with us, and my son Joe were having kids. Our first grandchildren were being born, so I canceled my all my dates in May and June to be able to be there for the births. And, uh, and, and rescheduled them for this year. <laughs> so we'll see. I can't wait to see what happens next year. Um, but no, thank you. I, I would like to do that again. Maybe we'll find something to do together. Let's do it. I'm dying to work with you. Will, will, you, will you keep your eye out? I will too. Sure. Something, if you have an idea, throw okay. it in my back and we'll do it. Okay.
I would yeah, love that. You know, and, and working down at the beach down there, you know, is, is never a bad thing for me. Right. Right. It just has to be the right time and the right play and the right reason to do it because oh, we oh, don't oh. work for the money, do we, darling? Well, you may not. I do. I do, too. That's the thing people don't understand. Got to make a living, you know? I mean, I don't own I Love Lucy. Have I mentioned that? We don't own I Love Lucy. Yeah. So um, I haven't seen you since we celebrated a birthday of yours. And we went to the, I'm just going to say this because it was so much fun. We went to the Wild Animal Park. And we, so got, right. we got a behind the scenes tour and we went out into the fields in the Jeep and fed the giraffes and all that stuff. Isn't that great? And we had so much fun. Yeah. And Mosholo. Remember that big elephant? Oh, yeah. Mosholo. Do you remember, um, what was the rhino's name? You remember that rhino? Uh, oh, gosh, I can't think. I can't he think of his name. name. He did. He did. We all have names. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm so happy to talk to you this way since I don't get to see you in person. And can't wait till I see you in person again. Um, thank oh, this you. is great. Thank you I, I love that you're doing this. It's a good way to have theater people, you know, talk to your audience too. How many have you done like this? Uh, I think we've done about seven, but we, I think I'm going to do about 15 of them. That's and, great. Uh, yeah. And we, we're going to, you know, we're trying to keep, I am so, um, so lucky to have a loyal audience at North Coast Rep, and they can't come here right now. No. So we're trying to no. keep people engaged and informed and entertained. And we're not a film company, so we can't yeah. make films. And and sometimes taping of plays and readings doesn't quite get over. A, and a I don't know if you're even allowed to do that. What are the, like, It's tricky. Rules, you, right? there, there are ways, but it's tricky. But yeah. I thought, you know, getting to know really great theater artists in this way is a way for people to stay engaged with the theater. So I think that's a great idea. You're so smart. I, I thank you. And maybe I'll do one of these with Larry if he's up for it. Oh, he'd be so great at this. I'll be back in touch. He would. He'd be great. At, he'd be way better than me. He has a million stories. He's editing his manuscript, but he'll be, he'll be done with that any year now. Okay. <laughs> well, Lucy, thank you so much for doing this, and I'll see you real soon. I love you. Love you. Love you too. Bye, everybody. Thank Bye -bye. you.